Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fabric Espresso series about data engineering and data science. My name is Estera, and today I'm joined with Elizabeth to discuss data mesh. So how to enable data mesh with one leg on Microsoft Fabric. Elizabeth, thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, my name is Elizabeth Oldag, and I'm a product manager on the OneLake team, which is part of Microsoft Fabric. Super. Can you do some rounds of um, introductions about the work you are doing and the uh, stuff you are working on? Yeah, um, OneLake is you know, one of the exciting new capabilities that came out with Fabric. And so we're the underlying data lake of Fabric, and we're bringing it as a Data Lake as a service, more of a, you know, the SaaS experience for Data Lakes, which is really exciting. And, um, you know, lots of uh, improvements and features going around providing open access to your data so that you have all of the tools and engines to um, enable all of your business needs and analytical needs on top of your data. Good. And uh, I'm very excited to learn and discover data mesh. But let's start maybe with, uh, with the first questions. Uh, with, with the first, let's start with the first question. What data mesh is in general? So if you can introduce us to this topic. Yeah, data mesh is um, a term you've probably heard uh, much more often recently. It's become a very popular um, it's like an architecture design, but it's much more than that as well. It's a whole shift in how you approach um, getting insights from your data, how you manage your data, and just um, you know scaling out the data lake capabilities across your organization. And um, it, in a nutshell, like data message is, is data mesh is a decentralized approach to managing your data and getting insights out of your data. And I'll walk through some of the, the concepts around data mesh and also how Fabric and OneLake enables you to build a data mesh pattern really easily as well. Okay. I'm really curious about how the concept looks like and maybe you can share some architecture diagrams or some slides that will help us to navigate this topic. Yeah, um, so there's many features and some basic concepts that I'll make sure we cover so that you understand some of those building blocks that go into building a data mesh. So um, let me show some uh, slides here. So to get you oriented, if you're um, somewhat new to Fabric and One Lake, the Fabric has a complete suite of analytic engines and tools, and they're all integrated natively on top of one lake to store the data. So it's the, the um, SAS foundation, the data lake foundation of Fabric. And, you know, data lakes have been around for many, many years and you have a vision and expectation of data lakes that lots of organizations have been pursuing, which is, it's, it's a place where you have all of your data stored without having to transform it when you write it. You can store the data in whatever format it comes in, you know, unstructured, structured data, and it bring it all into one location so that you can break down your silos and make it easier to blend and analyze together. And then having it in one place is um, making it easier to secure and govern your, your data as well. So Dalix, that concept has been around for a while, bringing all of your data into one location. But, um, you know, it does bring its challenges as well. Because when you bring all of your data in one location, like who, who is responsible for governing that data? And there's a couple of approaches to this that we'll talk about. One approach is you know, having a central team in your organization who's responsible for um, you know, managing what data gets put into the data lake and um, enforcing your policies and governance um, policies in your organization. And that's, that's one approach. And what's come out more recently through the data mesh approach is allowing your business groups to work more independently. So with data mesh, the data is under the um, ownership of that group that understands that data most intimately. It's not going through that central IT team. So you know, your marketing team would have their data in their um, you know, data lake location, and then you would have your 
you know, sales team or engineering product teams in their own data lakes. But then you have um, all these different teams who are doing similar things and having to manage their own lake. And you, know, you have to make sure you have visibility into what's happening across your data mesh pattern. So those are two approaches. And just to go into a little bit more detail, when you build these data mesh patterns today, often what it looks like is you have all these different storage services, storage accounts, and then you're copying that data between the different data mesh or different domains because you still want to blend and analyze that data together. And then you might be copying it out into a consuming layer to serve your end users, you know, consumption needs and reports and databases. So you'll see lots of data in lots of different locations, storage services, and lots of data copies. And so with One Lake, we are providing features and capabilities that enable you to build that data mesh pattern um, without needing to copy and um, you know, manage all of that data that's um, flowing across your organization. And there's many concepts behind this, and I'm not going to touch on all of them, but I, I want to first just give you a little bit of background that within One Lake, you have these workspaces, which is where your different teams and organizations can, can organize and store all of their data and data items. And then with this feature in Fabric called domains, you can assign um, domains to those workspaces. So for example, in this diagram, we have sales workspaces, marketing, finance, and all of this is all in a single one lake because you have one, one lake per tenant. And so now you have this nice boundary of managing and governing all of your data while all of your teams are independently managing and operating on that data. But how do we solve that blending and transforming that data together? So with shortcuts, you'll be able to create that virtual data product across data in different domains. And you know, shortcuts is a great feature and um, you should definitely check it out because it's a simple process to just connect to another, um, you know, another table or another folder in any workspace within your organization that you have access to. And you're not copying the data, you're not duplicating it, it's exactly a reference to that data and it looks now like it's inside your, your one link data item. And we have all of these engines on top that are accessing this data um, through Spark with the data engineering experience or SQL and the data warehousing experience. And they all work on top of data because it's all stored in Delta Parquet format. So Data Mesh has like two concepts, like the storage of the data, you want that to remain with the domain owner, but you also want everyone who has different skill sets across your organization who wants to access that data, have the right engine that they want to use on top of it. And so with Fabric, you have that real separation of compute layer and storage layer, which gives you that flexibility to use whatever compute engine you want without having to make copies of the data to put it in a specialized format or you know, a, a different kind of storage service. So um, that is kind of a quick nutshell of like how a data mesh pattern would look like on Fabric and on One Lake. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you for sharing. Uh, that's truly great. I have a couple of, of thoughts. First of all, uh, from the customer's perspective, uh, we are a big, as a customer, I'm, I have a big organization, different departments, sales, ma marketing, IT, and, and so on. So with uh, one leg, with data mesh in one leg, we have one central place when we store the data and we can assign the domains between different teams. So one centralized place of when we store the data, but every team can access that. Yes. Right? Yes, and so the domains feature enables you to discover that data too. So if I'm in the marketing team and I want to find sales data, I can now go to the One Lake Data Hub and filter out the sales data workspaces because they're tagged with that domain name. And now I can also see within that domain, I can see what's been you know, certified or promoted. So that those features also enable you to discover the data in your organization and trust that that data was 
the right data, you know, that the owners have certified for, for use across the company as well. So yeah, domains has many different um, values. You can, you know, tag things for your own um, organization, but also for you to discover and filter and yeah, um, increase the visibility across your organization. Yeah, and then we can leverage the feature that uh, if our viewers has, have not heard about shortcuts, please, please check the, the previous yes. videos. We covered that, what is a shortcut, also how to use that. We mentioned also, and we presented the demo end to end, how you can build a shortcut to the Delta table, also to build the shortcut to the uh, files. So please, please check it. And through shortcuts, we can just leverage all the data that are stored in different ADLS, so uh, storage accounts, just to simplify, and also uh, also in different clouds. For, for example, we can have a shortcut to Amazon S3. So yes. we can build one central place and with uh, branches ability to access different external site loaded data set. Is that right? That's right. And if I could just add one more thought too on this whole topic, this, you know, shortcuts bringing in that data um, is enabling that data mesh pattern, but also the, the power that the one copy Delta Parquet format gives is that you can run, if you're familiar with SQL, you can run SQL queries over that data. If you're more comfortable with Spark, you can run Spark queries. And now you're giving so much power to users and making it more accessible for them to get that insights from the data now. Um, so it's there's less of a barrier to to accessing that data without having to go to IT and you know asking for new copies of the data to be made or you know having to um, learn a new process just to get access to that data. There's there's so much flexibility for you to choose different engines based on what's right for your current use case. Yeah. I also yeah. think that the, this approach uh, is allowing customers to have a true 360 view of their operations, because then they can create just one team that has access to all the data with different domains, thanks to the data mesh approach, mm -hmm. and build the true current state, current reflection of the state and also in the future use AI to predict and make better decisions based on the holistic data view. Yeah, I think this is, um, yeah, a, what do I say? Like uh, an area that has so much potential and future growth here. And so we're I'm very excited about all the different features that we have out there today and then what's gonna come soon. There's just, yeah, unlimited potential. Elizabeth, the last question from my side, can you recommend any um, materials when our viewers can dig into the topic? If you want to learn more about Data Mesh on One Lake, we do have a blog post that was published um, in May that covers all of these concepts in a, um, you know, a unified view of One Lake and domains. And also, I definitely high re highly recommend a book called um, I think Data Mesh Patterns, which is by Zama Dagani, an O'Reilly book that I found to be very helpful as well. So Super. I highly recommend those. Yeah. Let's add the link to the video so our viewers can just reach out to those uh, two great resources. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, one's the blog post and one's uh, O'Reilly book too. I hope it's okay if I can plug that book, but I found it very helpful. So. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Super. Elizabeth, yeah. thank you so much for today. Thank you for joining and sharing all the knowledge about how to tackle the data mesh in Microsoft Fabric. For all our viewers, thank you for watching. Remember to hit the like button, leave the comment, suggest the future topics you would like to hear here and uh, see you next time during the next episode. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.